Hi, it's me, Mila, and welcome to my vlog today. We are going to talk about um, anti-Big K, also known as Kel, and um, just my journey with it and um, what it's been like. First off, I want to say, please excuse my eyes. I am so tired. We had horrific tornadoes here in our county. Luckily, our family is safe and the restaurant is safe, but um, nobody that lives here got sleep. So, and of course I'm filming at dusk because I had a really long day today. Um, and you guys, like I'm four days away from birthing my son. Um, so it's crazy. <laughs> So we're just gonna like give me grace because remember I'm a real person and I'm not like an influencer. Maybe I will, will be one day. I'll be like, hi, I'm here to influence you to be a mess. <laughs> but anyways, um, I just wanted to share my journey. And the reason I wanted to share was because when um, I was diagnosed with it, I scoured the internet and I could only find one blog, plo blog, post, blog post that was from years ago um, of a lady who had anti-Big K and um, it was informative, but it was really sad. And like, it did not, it was awful. We'll circle back around to that. Um, so let's start from the beginning. So 10 years ago, I had seven blood transfusions. I had the blood transfusions because I had a uterine rupture. And basically, um, I had a home birth that was a VBAC that um, my daughter had crowned. And that last big push is what ruptured my uterus. And I was rushed to the hospital and um, through medical negligence, our daughter died and I almost died and I lost two liters of blood. I had to have blood transfusions in order to stay alive. Now, um, there's been like conflicting information about that. Um, some, I've had a doctor say that there's no way to um, really test for anti-Big K and then I've had two or three doctors say to me that this should have been caught. So I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to say, but, um, you know, the bottom line is either way, I did not know that not only while I was planning my daughter's funeral, that my body was fighting and creating an antibody for tainted blood that it got. I got pregnant in September and um, I found out like right when I got pregnant, like three weeks. And um, it was crazy. Um, it was very overwhelming. Um, I had had a dream that, like a dream or a vision, whatever, that uh, there was a son and I saw the hands of God place a crown upon his head and written in jewels, it said redemption. And, um, I just thought, okay, well, if this is like a real thing, um, then I need to heal my hormones. So I started on a journey to heal my hormones. And after a few months, surprise, I was pregnant, I guess, because we practiced natural family planning for seven years. Um, I didn't, whoops, <laughs> just whoops. So that happened. And, um, but I knew I was like, okay, Lord, like, you know, you gave me this promise, so it'll be okay. So, um, because of all my birth trauma, which I have talked about in a podcast, and also I have a podcast coming out on, um, the 10 year anniversary of our daughter Giada's death that goes into more detail about it, um, which is at the end of July, it'll be released. But um, 
anyways, so because of all of that, um, I wanted to go with a midwife for most of my prenatal care and then switch over to an OB because um, I knew that I'd have to have a cesarean and um, I knew that it would have to be scheduled and I knew that I was high risk. So I just wanted to go as natural as possible um, because I wish that I could, you know, just birth a baby, but I've had a ton of birth trauma. So um, I started seeing um, an incredible midwife and at the beginning of December, I got a phone call and she told me that the lab had flagged me and that I needed to be sent to maternal fetal medicine in Nashville, which is about 40, 40 45 minutes away um, from us. What were her exact words? My blood came back as critical. So where I'm just like, what does that mean? And she had never worked with anti big K or as the doctors refer to it to Cal. Um, she's been a midwife for like most of my life and she's never dealt with it. So, um, I of course researched it and not much came up. Um, it's extremely rare and you know, I just, the one lady, like I said, I, um, that I found her blog, uh, she basically had gone through blood transfusions, um, in utero and she had two children who died from it. And then, um, like three or four children that lived, but she didn't, I can't remember exactly how it went, but, um, all I know is that at this time I was trying to run the restaurant with Christmas um, and dealing with that and the caterings and all the Christmas lasagnas and I was so sick. I have never been sick with my pregnancies like that. Like I've had like a little bit of morning sickness but when I say like I was sick, I mean I literally survived on hash browns and potatoes. Like all I could eat was potatoes, like plain potatoes. Um, so we, you know, we were just like, okay, well, we're going to put in for maternal fetal medicine. Um, it took some time to get in, sorry, it took some time to get in to um, maternal fetal medicine. And basically, um, my midwife was able to have a consultation over the phone. At that time, I was about 15 weeks or so. And like I said, Christmas was going on. We had to make like almost 400 Christmas lasagnas, which that was like a whole thing. Um, we had, you know, I was trying to be strong and brave for my kids. Um, and, you know, my kids had already gone through, like, my kids had already gone through two miscarriages and um, a stillbirth. And um, I was just like, okay, like, Lord, like, what am I, you know, what am I going to do? And I couldn't tell anybody about this because we didn't know anything about it. And so in our consultation, basically, um, the Cliff Notes version is, is that the doctor told us that um, Basically what happens is, is that your blood kills the baby's blood and that the antibody um, kills the red blood cells in the baby's blood, which leads to killing bone marrow, um, which affects the heart, which it all just kind of connects together. And that um, they couldn't see me until I was um, around 18 weeks. And not just because of Christmas, but because that's when the baby was big enough to start checking the artery in his brain um, with a Doppler. I just realized that I have <laughs> hair dye on my head. Look, I wanna look really good for birth, okay? I'm telling you, like I've looked like a big toe after having a cesarean, like, I don't know. They just freaking did me dirty. So I wanted to make sure I looked good this time. 
So we're not going to judge the um, hair dye on my forehead, okay? Um, but, uh, so I had to wait. You know, people, we had already announced because people were, <laughs> customers were so mean. <laughs> like, especially the old people, they would come in and they'd be like, um, you don't look good. Are you okay? Are you well? And I'm like, I literally can only, I can't eat anything but potatoes like I'm sick as a dog I have to keep working I have to keep this place going um you know and I was just like look like I'm knocked up okay I don't know what to tell you so um we had already made like a pregnancy announcement and had talked about you know the fact that we were going to have a baby and people would come up and ask me and be like hey Mila like you know how are you um how are you feeling like whatever and I just had to put on a brave face and be like, I'm fine. But I was not fine. I was not fine at all. Um, I still scared because we've got four days. Um, and I just, it's not like me to be silent about struggles. And, um, because I think that there's something so beautiful when you let people in and you let them, um, you know, pray for you and um, you let them believe with you. Because, you know, the Bible says um, we're two or more gathered. And um, I wanted people to know that I wasn't okay. But I had to pretend like I was okay. Because, you know, this is business. And um, so it was really hard talking to um, maternal fetal medicine. And, um, you know, they were basically like, you are going to live appointment to appointment. It's going to be a very long, hard road. He said that like three or four times. <sighs> I'm getting a phone call. Hi, I'm back. <sighs> It's actually been two weeks since I had Nunzio. I was interrupted in the middle of filming this video um, <laughs> with work drama. So I had to handle that. And here we are two weeks later and I'm finally finishing up um, my story with dealing with vitamin K. Not vitamin K. Dealing with my story of anti-big K. When we left off, uh, I was talking about my journey with uh, maternal fetal medicine and our first consultation. So I ended up going, I think it was January, around January 8th-ish um, to my first appointment. And the crazy thing about anti-big K and something that, you know, when you pull up Google or you go to research, there's not a lot of information about it because each case is so different. So when we went and we had our consult, they basically said that we had a 5% chance of just having every single appointment be okay and making it to, you know, 37 weeks to deliver. Um, the baby and I just kept saying like I believe in miracles I believe in miracles and I asked for prayers and I tried to be as um, open as possible about it I mean what are the chances that you get a tainted blood transfusion so um at first we had an appointment every two, every other week we were going. And then once we got sooner or once we got closer to the, um, once I hit 29 weeks, we started, or 30 weeks, I started going every single week. And not only was I going every single week to maternal fetal medicine, for the um, Doppler for the baby's brain. 
Now, when they would do that, um, he had to stay under 1.5. There was this one point where we got to 1.4, and that was at 35 weeks, I think, and I was really scared. I did not want him to be born that early. I did not want to do the NICU again because I'd already done the NICU with Pearl and it was a horrific experience. And um, I just didn't want to do the NICU again. And I wanted him to stay in for as long as possible. So that was really hard. Um, I remember we were driving home and I had just, was really overtaken with anxiety. This was the first time in my life, like I've had anxiety before, but this, during my pregnancy this time, this was the first time that I had anxiety where you feel that like cold rush of like fear or just coldness over you. And you just like, you get that frozen feeling like where you're like, I need to like run away. Um, that was really the first time that I've ever dealt with that. And that was during this pregnancy. So um, it gave me a lot of empathy for people because I thought that I struggled with anxiety sometimes before, but this has been the really the first time that I felt like I wanted to escape my life. Um, but then you have to like center yourself. And honestly, I would just put on worship music and pray because I didn't know anything else to do um, to combat that anxiety. Um, and I would just put my hands on my heart and tell myself like, I'm safe, I am loved, I am okay. When I first found out about the anti-Big K, I called my um, holistic primary care doctor and I told him about it and he did some research and he came over and he looked at my labs and he basically gave me a holistic formula. And I think that the combination of the supplements that I took, which were desiccated beef liver, Dr. Cassoni's rebuild, um, he gave me some a beet complex because I was extremely sick, extremely, extremely sick and nauseous um, at the beginning. And then right around, I'm going to say February-ish, I finally was able to like eat something that wasn't a potato. And um, what ended up happening was the only thing that didn't make me sick. And even still today, um, I'm two weeks out of birth. And the only thing that doesn't make me sick and the baby gassy is eating a animal-based diet. So an animal-based diet basically means that I was eating um, lots of red meat with good salt, um, eggs. I was, I've been eating um, fruit with honey. Um, over cottage cheese, just eating a lot of protein. And that's really what made me feel good. Is it scientifically proven that that's what helped me get to where I am, like to being able to deliver at 37 weeks and being okay? No. All I can say is this is what worked for my body. Um, also, when I got pregnant, I was somewhere around in the 250 pound range. And when I went to the doctor this week because I opened my incision <laughs> by doing too much, um, I was at 209, which I've not been this thin in my adult life since seven years ago, where I finally got under 200 pounds um, for the first time in my life and it lasted a week. So, um, this has been a journey for sure. Um, I would take colostrum, uh, lots of Celtic salt. Um, I took minerals. Um, 
I craved ice, but I crave ice all the time. I just love to chew ice. I'm an ice chewer. So I think it's more of like a stress thing than a mineral thing. But let me tell you, ain't nobody as happy as me with some ice, okay? Um, but you know when they checked the baby's blood and everything, they said nothing about anti-big K. They said everything was normal. Um, they never said anything about my blood in the hospital. Um, they just treated me completely normal. So that's probably something I should ask the doctor about when I go see him um, two weeks to go check on everything. But yeah, I can't believe that. I mean, I can believe that we made it because we literally walked out a miracle with the anti-big K. But it was just so crazy, you know, taking all these supplements and just trying to build my blood and really just I mean in the middle of the night was the worst I feel like anything after 8 p.m you're kind of like it's not real you know like your thoughts aren't your own you're, it's not real and so I would just have to put on um soaking music and just listen to soaking music oh sorry I would just have to listen to soaking music and really center myself and just focus on the fact that God still works miracles. So that is pretty much my story. We never had to get any blood transfusions with 12 inch long needles. Um, into his umbilical cord. We did not have to deliver extra early. The reason we went to 37 weeks was because of all the trauma in my uterus, which ended up being perfect because the doctor said that my uterine lining was like paper thin. So at one point, if the baby got strong enough, he could would have been able to kick through it, which is kind of scary. but. Through all the anxiety, through all the fear, through everything, um, all it did was make me, one, feel how incredible my community is and, the, and my family and my friends and everybody who prayed for us. Um, so many people came and loved on our family. I mean, from our baby shower to day-to-day -day life, um, There was just a lot of support and love and that was amazing to me just feeling that especially when you're the type of person where I believe that when you pray for somebody it's something that is so intimate that you can give somebody because you're literally taking time out of your busy day to pray for somebody and you know it's something that's holy and it's just something that's so personal. So I thought that was very beautiful and I'm very grateful for that because I do feel that that's what got us to where we are today. And having a healthy baby, I honestly could not have asked for a more beautiful birth. I couldn't have asked for, um, it for it to be better it was just beautiful and everything that I wanted they definitely you know stuck to my birth plan he was born perfect and that is my that is my story with anti-big K and being just completely blindsided by it. And if you've been diagnosed with anti-Big K, uh, please feel, re feel free to reach out to me. I would love to talk to you and to pray with you, pray for you. It 
It was very scary and very intimidating because there's nothing on it. And it kind of makes up its own rules with each person differently. But I just want you to know that miracles still happen today. And my son is one of them. So anyways, I love you. Thank you for listening to my testimony. And thank you for being on this emotional journey with me. But Tanti Bachi.